Praise the Lord, sir. Can you hear me? I cannot hear you. What about now? Perfect. Yeah, I see. I was just getting some things together. I just spoke uh, with your cousin. Yeah, he should be checking in tonight too. He gave me his new email address. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just. Did you get the attachment that I sent to the uh, thing? Should be on the bottom of the Zoom thing. I just shared it in a text message. Let's see. Duplicating what I do, babe. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We call that redundancy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and I tell you this, you know, and, and most business resumption plans are based off of what? A plan A and a plan B. If a plan A fails, then we automatically, like for example, the other day our power went out at work. Uh -huh. But because we have an A side and a redundant B side, a mirror image of the A side, if we get shut down, we got generators that automatically within seconds, unbeknownst to anybody to transfer everything to the B side. Right. So there's, there's like constant redundancy. Uh-huh. Right. What's up, brother? How you doing? What's up, brother Grace? How you doing? I'm okay. How you feel, sir? All right. I got you four by four, as they say. All <laughs> yeah. right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's up, cuz? How you doing, man? I'm all right. How you feeling? All right. Blessed to see you, man. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. I got, uh, actually, I got one of my boys supposed to be joining us. Absolutely. Beautiful. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. And, uh, That's what I'm talking about. I got two two people supposed to be joining us today. Okay. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. The more the merrier. The more the Amen. merrier. Yeah, I, I'm enjoying that. So bring them, bring them on, man. I thought I could spread the good word, man. Well, Absolutely. You spread the good word. <laughs> Absolutely. Man, I'm gonna yeah. start, I'm gonna have to start giving out some awards or something, man. Uh -oh. <laughs> it's on. <laughs> no, I'm getting enough reward just hearing the word, man. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Look, I'm we may have Jack to do to we may have to do a week a week vacation in, in, in our uh timeshare, you know, for you know that that might get some attention. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah, all yeah, paid yeah. For, all inclusive. Well, we we can we can make the room all inclusive. But <laughs> if you can get there, <laughs> but I don't. You never know. You know. God, you never God, know. You God, never God, know. Work something out. You know. Amen. Yes, sir. But yeah, I'm just getting things together. Hopefully, everybody's got the um the chart that I sent out and um well I gotta see how could I uh is is actually on my uh computer I'm on now I gotta try and pull it up okay you should just be able to click on it and it should open up in a separate screen let me see it's an attachment you got a Mac computer yeah I got I'm actually on my iPad right now okay yeah you should be able to do that okay let me so I, I might I might gotta click off for a minute no, nah, you shouldn't have to. If you just double click on it, it'll open up another screen. Okay, hold up. If I lose you, I'm coming right back. All right. Let me see. See what we got. Um, yeah, praise the Lord, Sister Nita. How y'all doing? All right, just fine. Just setting up here. All right. I got the mail out of the mailbox, so I got that already. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> did you did you get that chart, Sister Nita? It should be an uh, attachment to the Zoom thing. Yeah. Good. Okay. <clears throat> right. Yeah, we got the people rolling in. So. Okay. Man, it's it's seven already. Woo, boy. Well, you know what, Pastor? I can't. I can't figure that out. Let me click out, and I'll come right back. But let me try and see if I can get okay. it in. Okay. okay. Be right back. Okay.
Praise the Lord. Shamira, Shamira and Sister Lisa, praise the Lord. How y'all doing? Okay. Doing well. How about yourself? Great, great. Outstanding. I can't complain. If I did, it wouldn't do any good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's what the old folks used to say. They say, son, if you complain, it won't yeah. do any good. <laughs> So I learned from them. Ain't no use in complaining. That song say, I won't complain. If I could sing it, I'd sing it. I won't complain. Amen. I tell you. Got Azura, if I'm pronouncing it correct. Azura, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my uh, one of my very good friends uh, since childhood. She's going to be joining to listen on today. Outstanding, outstanding. Boy, I tell you, loving it, loving it. All right. This police, how you doing? I'm doing good. How are you guys? All right. You ready to read tonight? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Amen. Amen. I, I, love, I love it when you're anxious like that. That's right. We got uh a shocky good dog good old good dog. Yes. Um, good evening. My name is Ashara. Join the meeting. All right. Uh, uh, am I pronouncing correct? Ashaki? Yes, you are. All right. How you doing, Ashaki? Where are you from? Hi. I'm actually here in Newark, New Jersey. All and right. I'm invited to attend by Anthony Graves. All right. Jersey in the house. I hear you. I hear you. Jersey. <laughs> I hear you. Well, you putting them crowns, you putting them jewels in the crown, ain't you? <laughs> hey, man. That's all right. That's all right. I hey. give all that praise to Cuz, man, and give the honor to God. It's a domino Amen. effect. You, you know, yeah. each one teach one, and then it's infectious. Amen. You get Amen. inoculated with it, and then it passed on to somebody else, and somebody else passes. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Oh, you know it, boy. We're going to be all around the world. Amen. Yeah. Who was that? Shamira, Shamira, Shamira. Hey, hey, Shamira, how you doing? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Outstanding, outstanding. Everything good? Of course, of course. Still breathing, still living. All right. All right. <laughs> Stay still breathing and still living. That's a good thing. Yes. All right. <laughs> All Thank right. you for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I really appreciate everybody that comes online here. Hopefully y'all got some questions for me because I got Bible answers for you. All right. <laughs> and I don't know. I'll find out and I'll get back with you. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. All right. We just give them a couple of more minutes to still waiting on a couple of people. Who we missing? I know we missing Brother Adams. He ain't on here yet. And Brother David, so all right. <clears throat> About one more minute and we're gonna go ahead and get started because we got a lot of information to go over tonight. Amen. Miss Miss Corner, she ain't checked in yet. Okay. All right. Join the meeting. All right. Eight one six two oh two. All right. Praise the Lord if you just checked in. And Pastor, I just, just let you know I took a picture of it because I couldn't figure it out. I didn't want to really? hold you all. That, that's all right. I mean, okay, you see the file. You double clicked on it, right? Uh, No, I, I couldn't. Not, I don't know how to do that on my iPad. So what I did, I just took a picture of it. I got it on my iPhone. Is Now your, your, your iPad, can you, you can't use your finger to, to double tap it? Uh, man, I'm not. If my son was here, but unfortunately, he he down in North Carolina. He, he real good with it. So that, that's all right. We are gonna get you through it. We are gonna get you through it. You got it on your phone though, right? Yeah, I can see it. Yes, sir. Outstanding, outstanding. All right. With no father do, we are gonna go ahead and get started. And uh, all right, brother Anthony Gray, since 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 since. Uh, you 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 already got the mic. We're gonna have you open us up in prayer. How about that? Amen. 
Ah, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, hey your your cousin didn't tell you about volunteering and stuff. You know? <laughs> nah, he told me that ain't that ain't that ain't my best suit though. I'm gonna let you know. That's all right. That's all right. We, all right. Gonna, we gonna work on that. <laughs> Amen. We gonna work on that. Amen. Go ahead. Open this up. Just however the Lord give it to you, man. Go Amen. Ahead. Okay. Um, God, we come to you today thanking you for giving us the breath in our body and the people that we endure going through the daily days of our lives. Yes. I want you to thank uh, Pastor Wilson for giving him to us to give us the message. Yes. Thank everybody that's on this site that's about to receive the message. Thank in you. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beautiful. All Beautiful. Right. All right. That's good. All right. Let's see. Not my best suit. <laughs> Oh, oh, not yet. Not we we got Okay, it. well, that's yeah. what I'm talking about. Yeah, we we going to work on that, amen. Yes, yeah. sir. You know, I tell you a little testimony and brother Gray's going to probably laugh at me. Um mm. we had this thing at Shiloh, right? And, and and especially with the brothers and the sisters is that if you was the first one at church, you would be the one that have to open up and lead the services. Mm. Okay. And, and I mean, you got to always be ready. And I'll tell you right now, I, that used to get to me because I like to be on time. And I would show up and sometimes I'd just wait in the parking lot, kind of <laughs> down in my car because I ain't want to be called on, right? Uh -huh. So, and I, you know, I, I got to work on my singing because that that's that's my biggest thing. I always wanted to learn how to sing, you know, and um. Uh, and I would watch other people. I said, man, boy, they make it look so easy and everything, right? And I could give a testimony. I could read the scripture. But when you get up there in the front of the church, you got to have a song, too. You got to have at least two or three songs that you know that you can lead the congregation in, you know. And then you do pop-up testimonies. Praise the Lord. You know, you give a testimony. And, uh, you know, you just lead the service from there until you know the minister or the pastor come out and uh and if you're new to it it can be a little you can get a little nervous you know what i'm saying uh yeah. but they always require two people to be up there so you kind of you know feed off of each other's strength you know you want to be connected with somebody to know how to sing you want to be connected with somebody to know the scripture because that'll balance <laughs> everything out amen so we'll be calling on you, brother. I mean, don't look, you ain't by yourself, amen. And, uh, and look at you now. <laughs> absolutely. And, amen. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Amen. All right. All right. Amen. So we, uh, once again, we thank you for the prayer, uh, brother Anthony Graves. That was uh, huge. That was good. Amen. And we got to start somewhere. And I promise you, you stick with us. It's going to get better and better. Not to impress us, but it's for you. Yes. It's, it's for you. Because if you don't recognize growth in yourself, we're doing something wrong. Okay? So we just thank you uh, for that, you coming forward and just taking initiative to pray and everything. All right? And um, we thank uh, everybody else that's on here. We got a lot of new people. If you're able to show your face, show your face, y'all. This is an inductive service. And I know it may be, sometimes you may not be dressed appropriately, and that's okay. You know, I understand, but if we were in a physical church, amen, you know, we would see your face. You know, if you going through something, I want to see your eyes. I want to see your face. Cause how would I know, you know, this ain't no woo woo stuff where, oh, I know what you go. You know, we don't do that. <laughs> I want to oh. see your smile. So if join you, the meeting, if you go, Hey, Hey, Shamira, I see you. Go ahead, girl. I see you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I see Brother Adams over there. All right. This is good. All right. So we're going to go ahead with no farther ado. We're going to go ahead and get started. Again, if you're new here, we welcome you to Jubilee Apostolic Ministry located 392 South Newtown Road, Virginia Beach, Virginia. You can connect with us on Zoom. And uh, we thank you. We love you. We appreciate you for coming out to fellowship with us and taking time out your schedule in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started here. Now, we just came off of a fast. Amen. 
And in that fast, we talked about putting the flesh under subjection. The reason that we got the flesh under subjection because we want to grow spiritually. And the only way for us to grow spiritually, number one, you got to be reading your word. Number two, you got to be praying. Number three, you got to be fasting because number four, you got an enemy. His name is Satan. And we got to be able to rebuke him uh, by rebuking our own flesh by praying and fasting. Amen. These things come by praying and fasting. If not, he going to run you out your own house. That's right. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Amen. So we thank God. Amen. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, hopefully everybody received the chart. We're talking about the threefold nature of man. Uh, we started this last week. Let me pull mine up so you can see it. First of all, let me share my screen. Is there anybody that don't have the... Uh, the document that I'm getting ready to put on the screen. You don't. Pastor, it's on my phone. It's okay. on my phone, but I'm 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 listening to the service on my phone, so I'll, okay. If I have to go back and forth, I will. Okay, not a problem. Shamira, you had your hand up. Go ahead. I was just saying that I don't have the uh, document. Okay, now you received the Zoom link, right? Mm -hmm. At the bottom, there's an attachment. If you click on that, you, you'll probably be able to uh, see that. I just sent it to you, Shamira. Okay, thank you. All right. Who is that, Shalise? Yes. Oh, I hear you. Go ahead, girl. I see you leading it. <laughs> hey, Pastor. <laughs> yes, sir. That A62 number at the bottom, the uh, A62955, that's my boy. Got you. What's his name? His name. Oh, give him your name. Okay. Oh, you can hear me? It's Owen. Yes. How you doing? Owen, how you doing? Okay, no problem. Great. I'm doing blessed, man. I'm glad to be invited. Thank you very much. Outstanding. Amen. It's a pleasure to have you, man. We appreciate you. <laughs> much love to you. Much love to you showing you, out here tonight, you, okay? You, yeah, you're getting his jersey love. You got it. <laughs> All right. That's what's up. That's what's up. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started here, and hopefully you got your, your Bible with you, okay? We're we going to really yeah. hit it tonight, I'm telling you. Y'all better be ready tonight, because, uh, you know, we're going we gonna to hit it real good. Let's see. Let me turn my Bible. Got my Bible and stuff ready. Now, all right, can everybody see the chart that I have up here? No. Uh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Something just happened. Uh, let me move the screen over. I shared my screen now. You got, can you guys see that? No. Okay. Okay. No, I don't see the chart. You don't see the chart? No. Wait a minute. Okay, let me. I see you. I see you. I don't see the chart. Okay, I'm yes, sharing it now. I'm sharing okay, it now. I got it. Yes, sir. I got it. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay, great. I'm glad you guys got it now. Now, here's where we are. We're talking about the threefold nature of a man. And when we say man, we talk about men, women, boy, girl, child, everybody, just the composition of man in general. And we're going into a bit of a review. Last uh, week, we talked about the carnality of man. Now, when you hear that term carnal, I want you to think fleshly. I want you to think natural natural thinking, and we also call that good old common sense, okay? And think uh -huh. about this. How many know that common sense is not going to get you to heaven? All right. Man. I know that's right. Say that again. There's a lot of smart people Amen. out here. There's a lot of ignorant people that are out here, but just because you got common sense, that does not give you a ticket to heaven. Amen. Amen. Because, see, we're talking about there's three parts of you, a body, a soul, and a spirit. Now, just as a review, all right, uh, Brother Anthony, give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. Okay, give me a second. All right, all right, we're real patient. We got time. And uh, I'll put mine on the screen. He'll be coming from the... Uh, I think you got the New King James Version, but... Uh, 
I'll put it, put mine up here as well. Okay, you said first Corinthians what? Uh hold on, let me let me catch up. All right, first Corinthians three and one. First Corinthians three and one. Grace right. is I got it. You ready? Uh-huh. Grace is God's tree gift mm -hmm. to salvation. Wrong, wrong one. Chapter mm -hmm. three. First Corinthians chapter three. Okay. That's all right. Two. Okay, three and one. Paul called. That's what you want. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Paul called the Corinthians. Wrong one. That's not the one. You had you had First Corinthians chapter three, right? Uh huh. Oh, you said three and one. I'm at one. Yeah. Chapter, chapter three, verse one. I'm gonna go ahead and start reading. It. Let me know when you get it. All right. And and I the brethren. There you go. Okay. And I the brethren uh -huh. cannot cannot speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal. Uh huh. As to babes in Christ. Yes. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, go for ahead. until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able for you are still carnal mm -hmm. for where there are envy, mm -hmm. strife and division mm -hmm. among you. Are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? All right. For when one says, I am Paul. You can stop right there on the third verse. All okay. right, that word carnal, okay, and anytime you in the New Testament or you in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, the, the New Testament was, was translated from, from the Hebrew to the Greek. And that's why when you see the Greek word, sarkikos is the word for carnal. And what it means, fleshly, having the nature of flesh under the control of, and it says, an animal type of appetite governed by your mere human nature and not, here it go, not by the spirit of God. Amen. Now, what does that mean to us? When we're thinking in the flesh, if you look at my chart where it says carnal right here, all right, what you would notice, you would notice that uh, in the flesh dwells what? No good thing, right? Amen. Right? Right here. See this right here? It dwells no good thing. No. I don't care how smart you are, what school, what side of the tracks you come from, there is no good thing that dwells in our flesh. We can back this up by the word of God because we, first of all, we looked up the word carnal and we realized that it is a separation from the spirit and flesh. Okay. So you can't please your flesh and please God at the same time. All right. Now, this is just a review. I got to move because I got a lot of stuff that we're going to talk about tonight. So, okay. Any questions on what that is, the natural? No, anytime, sir. anytime someone say something to you and it, it could be anything and if it agitates you if it if if it causes your spirit to be vexed all right or or if you walk in a room and it feel like somebody got a beef with you or something see this is a spiritual encounter we can't always explain it because unless someone teach you what's really going on, you don't even understand. All you know is that person don't like you. All you know is you don't like them. You understand? But we're going to get to the root of the matter tonight. We're going to talk about these spiritual things because sometimes what you're dealing with is demonic spirits.
Mm-hmm. And, it, it, and, and, and it has a problem with your spirit. Mm-hmm. You understand? So we'll talk about that a little bit more. Hopefully, I'm doing a quick one that you understand what we mean when we say carnal. Now, moving forward, take a look at this. Let me get off this uh, annotated thing. Now, when you look at this, I want you to see imagination, conscience, memory, reason, and affliction. It's down like six o'clock here when you take a look at it. Now, your flesh is tied. It's tied to that inner circle, but I want you to focus on the outer circle because this is how this is how your natural man communicates with the spiritual world. All right, you ready for this? When you see the eyes out a window to the soul. Mm-hmm. Now take a look at this now. Take a look at this now. See, here, 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 here is the eyes right here. You see that, mm-hmm. right? Let me change my color. Hopefully, uh, um, I'll do it in red. Hopefully, can everybody see it? Yes, sir. Now, the eye is connected to what? Your imagination. imagination. Whatever you imagining, it's because your eyes have seen something. All right. If you believe that somebody don't like you and you think about it, your eyes have to pick it up first. Yes. Then we call it a beef in the street. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> he gritting on me. Yeah. Or, oh, okay, let's take it to the bar. It might be a situation where you like, you know what, I'm gonna get them digits. I know she liked me. Oh, I know he, I know he liked me. You see what I'm saying? But all this came from what your eyes are seeing and your eyes are impacted because of what's in your soul. When you are unregenerated, when you're not saved, let's deal with that. You can't, there is no good thing that can come out of you when you unregenerated. That means unsaved. You're going to think about sleeping around. You think about cussing. You think about drinking. You think about drugs. All these things are indicators in the flesh that our flesh enjoy. But what it really is it really is a manifestation of what you have in the inside, in the real you, which is your soul. But we're acting it out. So the eyes is connected to your imagination. The nose is connected to your conscience. We're gonna talk about this a little bit more. Okay, now, what I did for you, we're gonna read a little bit. Let me pull this up. Trying to pull it up. It is is Let me clear that. Clear my drawings. Okay. All right. There you go. That's where I'm at. All right. Now. All right. Now, y'all see my circle there. Can everybody see that? Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Let me blow it up or or at least I think everybody can see it. All right. There you go. All right, we're talking about the threefold nature. Now, if you can see this circle, that outer circle that we call the body, this circle stands for the body of a man. And the middle is the soul and the inner is the spirit. It is the spirit, okay? I keep pulling it down so you can see it. All right, now, the soul, it uses the five senses. You know, your touch, your taste, your smell, and your hearing, okay? These are all the things that your body uh, deals with. 
your sight, your smell, your hearing, your taste, and your touch. So now, you ever heard somebody, you smell something and it smells evil? Yeah. It smells evil. But how do you smell a spirit? You can't see it. No. It's the senses. You have, a, you have a sense that's made inside of you that let you, Paul said, it's something that was there and it made the hairs on his skin stand up. He couldn't see it. But these are your senses that God has put in you. It's just like when you watch a scary movie and it's something eerie about it. You're like, I don't like this. You know, you're watching some Stephen King and something you're like, I don't like this. Something ain't right with this. Who wrote this? How did they write something to this magnitude? If there was no evil spirit involved, you understand? So we're talking about these circles here. Uh, so the soul uses your five senses because see the soul cannot do anything without the extremities that God gave you. You ever notice that when you wanna talk to a girl, you know, or a man, and you notice that when you touch them, listen to me, it sets the mood. It causes a reaction because in the inside, your soul is yearning to be with that person. And it uses your hands. It uses your lips. It uses other parts of your body to touch and hold the soul of that other person. Oh, I wish you get what I'm saying now. Yes. When you get with people and you're not married to them, they become, you become soul ties. Soul ties. Mm -hmm. Now okay. it's spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. All right. So, so these five senses are critical. The senses, the gates of the soul is what? Your imagination. We gonna go over there. Your imagination, that's gate one. Gate two mm -hmm. is your conscience. Gate three is your memory. Gate mm -hmm. four is your reasoning. And gate five is your <laughs> affection. So now watch this now. All right. Now I'm going to jump forward. But if you notice that the Holy Spirit is tied to what? Memory, right? Yes. And the memory is tied to what? The ear. And faith comes by what? Ear. ear. And when I tell you, I say, how do you know you got the Holy Ghost? Did you, did you hear it? Hear? <laughs> did you hear yourself? Because if you don't hear yourself speak in tongues, that tell me that you committed nothing to memory. And it lets me know that there's an absence of the spirit in the inside. Because if it was there, you're going to have read it in the scripture. And you're going to also have heard it from someone that was witnessing to you. Mm -hmm. Get it? See, this is, this is a systemic approach to understanding what we're made of. I love that word systemic because the root word is system. Mm -hmm. God made us, we're wonderfully made. We are a system that works the way God wants us to work. Now, sometimes we use our system to do negative things, mm -hmm. but the bottom line, your system works and you have to understand it. All right, mm -hmm. I don't want to lose anybody. Questions so far? Does everybody understand what I just said? Yes, sir. Awesome, awesome. Okay, so your imagination is driven by what you see. Your conscience is driven by what your nose smell. When you go into a restaurant and the first thing that lets you know or make you think that the food is good is the based smell. on what? Your the smell. smell. Mm -hmm. If it don't smell good, you automatically assume that the food is not good. Mm -hmm. And we also eat with our what? Our eyes. Mm -hmm. So when we go back to sight and we see that the food looks good, and it smells good, and we heard that the food was good, well, we begin to taste it. Mm -hmm. 
And then we want to put our hands on more of it. Mm -hmm. See how that works? Yes, sir. It's a system. So now watch this. When 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 a young man that's unlearned and an old man that's unlearned put his eyes on a woman, his eyes see beauty. He's attracted to how she smells. She heard, he heard, he heard that she get down like that. Now he want to take a taste of her, if you will. Then he want to feel. See, all this, listen, ain't no shame in all this. I want you to know that this is how our body works. This is how our flesh works. Thank you, Jesus. I'm sorry. So I'm giving you these examples because we ain't even got to spiritual warfare yet. Right. I want you to understand it. See, you got to understand you first. You got to understand why you do the things that you do. Why did you fail in the past to respond the way you responded? Nobody taught you about these things. Nobody told you this is why you do what you do. All right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Now, uh, question. All right. We're doing good. All right. Let me go back. All right. Now, we talked about the gates, which is the imagination, conscience, and memory, and the reason and our affections. The gate of imagination of the soul corresponds to your sight. We talked about that. The gate of conscious corresponds to the smell. We talked about that. The gate of memory, it corresponds to your hearing. And the soul recalls what it heard. When you go to church and you hear the word of God, it resonates in your, in your memory. Yeah. It becomes part of your conscience. What pastor yeah. said, don't go off of what pastor say. If pastor say what the word say, and you read it for yourself, you heard it for yourself, you can take it to the bank and know it's the gospel. Amen. Yeah. See, when Jesus Christ died and rose on the third day, there was a veil that was ripped. Yes. So now you no longer have to go through a priest. You are the That's priest good. in your own home. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, you got a pastor as a guide to teach and preach the word and show you the word of God, but you could be at home and go to God all by yourself. You can yeah. repent to God all by yourself and say, Lord, fix me. I'm yeah. in error. I'm a sinner. I've sinned. I don't want to live that way anymore. And do you know you will get the same results that you get is if you was in a church building? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. you would. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not giving you a ticket not to go to church. The Bible say forsake not the assembly of the brethren. The reason mm -hmm. you want to go, you want to meet in a place like we're meeting where you see everybody and you know what? You see other people in this race. Because after mm -hmm. a while, you're going to feel like you by yourself and, and, and you can't do this thing by yourself. You need to see other people that's doing what you want to do. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. All right. All right. Now, the spirit. The spirit receives impressions of the outward and the material things through the soul in the body. Now, let's take a look at the chart. What are you saying, Pastor? When you look at this chart, we talked about the body. We talked about the soul. But in the inside, you see something called your spirit, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jesus breathed into Adam and he mm -hmm. became a living spirit. Mm -hmm. But your spirit is predicated upon your imagination, conscious, memory, reasoning, and your affection. And if you go down and drop down, you can see the outer parts that, that also impact your spirit. So the Bible say, as a man thinketh, so is he. In your spirit, if you allow negative things to be in your spirit, 
it will impact your imagination and your imagination has an impact on your eyes and your conscience has an impact on your nose and your memory has an impact on what they say in the street. See, see the streets say, if you a real man, you supposed to do this and this. The streets say, if you a real woman, you supposed to do this and this. Well, I challenge you on what you're taking inside of your memory what you're taking inside of your hearing. Because if you allow it to go inside of your spirit, see this, let me draw this right here so you can see it. Annotate. All right. Hold on, draw, there you go, right here. You see this little window right here? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. That is the window to your soul and spirit. Mm -hmm. In your memory, in your hearing, which is right here, mm -hmm. if you allow the street, and, and I'm gonna break the street down and just say the world, cause you guys understand that. If you allow the world to enter your hearing, it will integrate itself into what I call your spiritual DNA. Mm -hmm. And you will, it will become part of your life. Now, inside of your spirit, see these things right here, faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. That's what you're supposed to, that's what you're supposed to have in your spirit right here. But Amen. one thing that can trump faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship is when you let negative things come into your window. Yes. You get it? Amen. Yes, what do you think about that, Shaka? I see you. So go, go talk to me. What's on your mind? Talk to me. You, you, something came to you. I'm, I'm not <laughs> All right. You, you, you know, when I looked at you, Ashaka, it seemed like you was enlightened with some knowledge. Something, you, you, something hit you. Talk to me. Talk to me, Ashaka. What, what, what came to you? Um, so I, I, you know, I definitely, it really did resonate with me about the faith and the hope, um, the reverence, the prayer and the worship and, and, and what that does to you every day. Um, and, and the forces that may be outside that try to like, take all of that away from you. Um, yes. Yes. Man. All right. So, good job. That's no. what I'm talking about. <laughs> See, this is why, listen, do you realize that God speaks to every one of y'all? And I was not willing to let that golden nugget get away. That's why I told y'all I want to see your face. Because when I see your face, right. I, you, I'm like, okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. A shock yeah. of good, good doll has just received something from God, and she needed to share that with the people. See, whether, see, my job is to draw it out of you. Oh, it's in you. It's in all y'all. Yeah. When I see the goodness, I'm not going to let it go. I'm like, okay, I saw it, Lord. I received it. <laughs> but I want you to know, Miss Good Goodall, that God just used you to speak to the people. Amen. And it was awesome. Amen. Yes. Amen. It was Amen. awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. All right. Okay, questions, comments. All right, we're doing good. Now, oh, can I please? Sorry, can I say something? Oh, go ahead. That's Shamira. Go ahead, Shamira. Yes. So, um, one thing that I think is like a good example as to you know the ear, eye, nose, mouth, feel, gate is like you know when you're watching movies, like you guys were talking about earlier, and um, with your eyes you see. With your ears, you hear, but you also feel like in the movie theaters, you feel the vibrations and everything. So mm -hmm. those are like three ways that they get into your your body and then into your soul yes. and then your spirit. And that affects how you think, how you react mm -hmm. to certain things. And yeah, that's pretty Amen. much Absolutely. Amen. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. See, mm -hmm. I'll tell you, the Bible say that we only know in part. Yes. So if Brother Anthony Graves give a nugget, Brother Ellis Graves gives a nugget, Shamir and so for everybody on here, 
input, we can see a clear picture of what God is saying. Yes. That's why God never speaks through just one person. Thank you. The Jesus. Bible say hey, out look, of the mouth of two or three witnesses, let everything be established. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes. This is why your Can I input, say something too? Can I say something too, brother? If you don't mind. I'm go ahead. It's brother Owen. I, I just wanted to check. I'm sorry, my thing was on mute before. I didn't realize that. Okay, but I also wanted to ask you a question. Go ahead, brother. Owen. Okay. Go ahead. In, re in regards to the senses, it doesn't seem like it has to go in any any order either. So uh, to piggyback off what Ashanti said at the end of the day, it seems as though, too, depends on what atmosphere you're on. You can actually touch something that just don't feel right. I mean, right. you can start from the other end. It doesn't have to necessarily be by sight or either by smell. It could be by hands and then work the other way. Absolutely. Does that makes sense? Absolutely. Okay, Listen. yeah, I, I, I just wanted to make sure I caught on to that the right way because it go it, it interchange at any given time based Absolutely. on the atmosphere and the platform that you're on. Okay. Listen, Listen God, God made a well-oiled machine. We are, yeah. when I tell you we are Amen. some people, our brains, we don't even know what we got up here. This, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, it is versatile. And yes, uh, just to uh, piggyback off what the brother said, listen, it you know, it doesn't have to be imagination first, conscious second. You know, it, it could be in a different order. It depends on the complexity of your mind and how you think. You see, what I'm saying? see, some people think affection first. Some people feel like, oh, well, they don't love me because they're not affectionate. Ah, uh, that doesn't mean they don't love you. Well, he didn't remember that it was our anniversary or our birthday. Does that mean that he don't love you? No, no. but that's how you process. See, we have to know how people process. When you really get to know your brothers and sisters, you know automatically how they process information. Amen. Amen. Yes. All right. Okay. Let's see. So we talked about the carnal. Um, all right. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. All right, Brother Anthony, you got it? Okay, give me one second. Yeah. Nine Christians, right? Hold up. First you said 2 and 14. Yeah. Nine Christians? Wait a minute. Hold up. Let me get there. I'm trying to get it on the screen so everybody can see it. No, two and fourteen. The, the natural but man. The, but the natural man, Tom. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Y'all, excuse me, please. Two. All right, brother Owens, read that for me while we wait. But the natural man receives not the things of the spirit of God, but that they are the foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judge of no man. Thank but you, who he know the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. All mm, right. Strong. Thank you. That's that's powerful. That's powerful, brother Owen. So yes, look at that. So we're talking about this carnal man. It says that the natural man receiveth not, not, not the things of the spirit of who? The spirit of Satan? The spirit of God. Of the Jehovah, Jesus Christ. You cannot receive spiritual things if you're thinking in the natural, it says, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because. Now, if anybody asks you why, because they are spiritually discerned. Mm. And you can't walk Thank in you. the flesh. You can't walk in the flesh, brother Graves, and in the spirit at the same time. Amen. Right. You got to be one way. Mm -hmm. This is why I tell people, if you come into church and you a fool, it's better to, it's better for you to admit that you a fool. 
Just say you're a fool. Hey, look, I ain't got it right. I'm trying to get it right, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. And I can't, listen, I can't hold you to nothing if your knowledge level is not there. Amen. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Brother you Bowles, are, see, see Amen. Brother Bowles, potential don't mean nothing to me. Absolutely. Potential means that you got potential and you need to practice until you become sharp at it. Amen. A woman should never marry a man with potential. That's right. A man should never marry a woman that has potential. Because when you want your plate fixed and you want your food right and you want your laundry done, you want your house clean, you need a full grown woman. And when you when, when that woman wants protection, she wants a stand up man that's going to protect and, and he's going to be the shield for his family. You don't need a little boy. You need a grown man. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Right. And a grown man is not determined by his statue. He right. might listen. Mm -mm. He might be five five, but he'll put a six foot guy on his butt. Yes. Because in war, to a real man, there are no rules. No. See, see what I'm saying? So, so a lot of people talk with their mouth, but that little short man might go get a, a two by four and wait while you walk and, and and slap you upside your head with that two by four and knock you clean out. And you're like, well, he wasn't supposed to do that. Well, it's war to him. That's right. So now, here's what I'm saying. That as real men and women of God, God holds us accountable. But we have to learn to operate in the spirit and not in the flesh. Now, Brother Owens read in verse 15, it says, but he that is spiritual, look here now, you're supposed to judge all things. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh, there's that J word. Pastor, you didn't use the J word. Yes, I did. The scripture said that you can judge all, all things. All things. things. Pastor, you judging me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I am. But I'm judging you spiritually. Yet he himself is judged of no man by no one see we can't go wrong when we go by the scripture this is what i tell you don't never tell nobody your opinion and don't never give nobody your interpretation it has to be in black white and red amen, amen. If, we say, if we believe that this bible is of god then we need to stick to it because we get deceived when we deviate from it. Mm. And we allow people, we allow people to speak into our life and give their opinion and their interpretation. Listen, I'm going to treat y'all like I was in college. Listen, in, in this school, if you're going to make a comment, you need to have a reference to back up what you're saying. Okay. Because if you can't back it up with the with, with with a reference, a biblical scripture, it's just your opinion or your interpretation. Mm -hmm. There's a way that seems right to man, but the way thereof will lead you to death. Yeah. Did Jim Jones do that? No, he right. believed in Jim Jones yes, he and the Kool Aid, mm -hmm. and led him to their death. Don't know. So they I, am, I am not God. All I am is a messenger. Ain't yes. none of y'all God. Right. All we can do is give people the word of God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. All right. So you read 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 14. Now, now we can get into where I want to get to tonight. See, now we just we just doing a review, but now we get to get into it now. Because what I want to talk about tonight is what happens when you die? What is the disposition of your soul and your spirit when you leave this side? We need to know that because I'm trying to awake you up that people are rolling dice with their life. 
Absolutely. If you go to bed tonight and you did not repent and ask the Lord to be your Lord and Savior, you understand. Chances are you can lose your soul. I want you to take this thing for serious. Because there's no guarantee that me, you, or any of us on here is going to wake up to see tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, it's real. It's real. Mm. All right. All right. So let's take a look at the spiritual. Give me 1 Corinthians 2, 1 through 13. Brother Graves, you want to get that one for me? 1 Corinthians 2. Uh-huh. Oh, we, and one. Hold on. I think we already there. 1 in 13. Yeah, we are. Read that for me. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. A actually, where I want you to start at? Uh, mm, 10. I want you to start at 10, and we're going to read down to uh, wow, 13. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 10 through 13. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things. Hold yes. up. Hold up. Wait a minute. We got to go to the chart. Where my chart at? Now, body, soul, and spirit. Yeah. Brother Grace, you just said that the spirit searcheth what? All things. So all this right here, your body, your soul, and your spirit is, is holding you accountable. It's searching you. It's the real you. Amen. It has the ability to go into your imagination, your conscious, your memory, yes. your reasoning, and your affection. And then it's going to, you're going to tell on yourself because whatever you're looking at, whatever you're smelling, whatever you're hearing, Whatever you tasting and touching tasting. is yes. an indicator of what's in your spirit. Yes. yes. See, this is why no man can hide from God. That's right. You are what you eat. You are what you eat. Yes. When you consume the wrong thing into your spirit, you become that. Yes. Mm -hmm. When you pick up a pornographic magazine or you watching them X-rated, uh, you know, nasty movies, you actually become that. Tell you actually it, want your, your wife to perform and do what your eyes just saw. Mm -hmm. And vice versa. That's right. I'd be like, mm, I want him to do it like this. I want mm -hmm. him to do it. Why? Where, where did that notion come from? It came from what you the, see the, and the, what uh, you Heard. Yeah. That's right. And then sometimes sister girl want to put some mess in your ear. Mm -hmm. Well, sister Susie said, uh, brother Anthony Grace, what's your shoe size? <laughs> I want to buy you some sneakers. Now you see what I'm doing, right? I'm being yeah. real crafty with it. What's yeah. I want to buy you some air joy? What's your shoe size? <laughs> Come on, work with me, brother. What's your shoe size? Eleven. Oh Lord, you are laughing. So in their mind, they don't already size you up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Because they got this myth. They it ain't no scripture. It ain't scripture based. They got no. this myth from the street. Yes. That's all about your shoe size. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh y'all don't want to talk to me. No, go ahead. One hundred. <laughs> I'm two hundred tonight. <laughs> because I'm trying to shame the devil. I'm trying to show you why we do what we do and what we did in the past. We can't witness to nobody. We can't tell nobody how to get to where we are unless we go back and tell them, how do you recover? Amen. And we got to keep it real. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, so... All right, let's see where we are. We at verse 10. Go ahead, verse 10. I'm at the word at, after the, uh, so for the spirit search of all things, yea, the deep things of God, verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of a man? Well, hold, hold up, hold up. You don't know me? <laughs> you don't know me? <laughs> 
you don't know what I'm thinking. You don't know what's in my heart. The scriptures say, for what man knoweth the things of a man? Go ahead, Brother Graves. Save the spirit of man, which is in him. Which is what? See, the spirit is in you. If you look at your chart, it's in you. Go ahead. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. What is saying that you don't even know yourself. That's right. But the spirit of God know who the real you is. Now, let's prove that. Let's prove that. Let's take a look at our chart here. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. What is it co-located with? The spirit, the soul, and the body. You see how that works? They are all connected. Don't get the Holy Ghost mixed up with your spirit. Mm -hmm. It's two separate things. Yes, it is. When I ask a person, do you have the Holy Ghost? How you know you got it? Oh, I just, I feel, oh, oh, okay, you said feel. So that tell me you in your flesh. Cause you just said that you feel, that's the touch gate. You see that? Mm -hmm. yes. You just said you feel. And then your feeling is attached to your affection. But your affection, your feel has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost right here. No. This is a whole separate entity. See, the Holy Spirit, see the window. Let me go back to my annotation. The Holy, come on thing. All right, where's my draw? There you go. Now, the Holy Spirit must enter into it must enter into you right here. You see it? Yes, sir. See that opening right there? You have to allow it to come in. If you do not let it in, it won't reside there. Now, see this? This word called your will. Mm -hmm. That's the keeper of the gate. When your will say, I don't want God, guess what? The big swinging door right here, it closes. All right. And can nothing come in and help you with the door closed. Amen. Praise the Lord, Pastor. Say, I stand at the door and knock. Mm -hmm. This right here, he's battling with your will. If you open the door, you understand, then that goes away. You just open the door. Yes. Boy, I feel good. I hope I'm making this plain to y'all. Praise the yeah. Lord, Pastor. Go ahead. I want to add something. Go ahead. If you will, can we turn to Luke chapter 2? Absolutely. Luke chapter 2. Okay, hold up. Let me turn to it. All right. Luke chapter 2. Hey, cuz, can I read that? Because I want to apologize to everybody. I got this new Bible that I got today, and it is the study Bible. But now what I did, I just got to my phone because I got my Bible and my cell phone as well. So I could read it if, if you like. All right. So let's go to Luke chapter two. Let's okay. go down to the 52nd verse. Okay. All right. You ready? And if you will, read for me, please. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Amen. So Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. Now, let's let's unpack this for a second. Jesus came on the scene. When did Jesus receive the Holy Ghost? When John the Baptist was going to buy, was going to baptize him, right? Mm hmm. Yes. Remember when he fasted for 40 days and 49, the spirit of God came. So, and after that, it was about three years. The disciples were with him for about three years. Mm -hmm. So it took Jesus from birth to about 30 to receive the Holy Spirit, right? Correct. And the disciples didn't receive the Holy Ghost until the day of Pentecost, right? Right. So it took them at least three years to receive the Holy Spirit, right? Absolutely. So they were and, and, the, 
Amen. So the point I'm pointing out is that, so here we have Jesus increased in wisdom and stature. So it's mm -hmm. almost like a vetting process that we all go through. Because what I'm doing is debunking the thought that, oh, when I get saved, I receive the Holy Ghost, right? Uh -huh. No, we just, we just went over when Jesus received the Holy Ghost. Right. And then we can confirm that when the apostles received the Holy Ghost, they were with Jesus for three years. And it took them three years to receive the Holy Ghost. They received on the day of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So the only point that I wanted to point out, Pastor, when you were talking about the Holy Ghost, I just wanted to make sure everybody understood that for those who believe that the Holy Ghost come when you get saved, that is not a that is not a teaching of the gospel of the uh, apostles of God. Brother, that that awesome. Uh, you know what? That is powerful because you know how many people think that they confess with their mouth that Jesus is Lord, uh, even if they've been baptized, if you ask them if they have the Holy Ghost, they'll tell you they got it. Yes, sir. And that, that's not true. Amen. That's not because true. They want to in the process. Right, right. You know, and, and when a babe come out, they mama womb, uh, they, they do not come out walking. They do not come out uh, uh, speaking. It's a process, and, and because we're in time, God is not in time, but because we're in time every day, we learn and, and, and grow a little more prayerfully we do. Right. Amen. 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 And, and, and I just have one other thing to add, sir. Go ahead. When we was reading 1 Corinthians, Brother Owen read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, about how natural people can't discern the things of the spirit. And I just wanted to give the illustration of what we see today, just so, yes, we're reading this in the scriptures, but also it's right before our very eyes. So when you see all these people being shot, mass shooting here, mass shooting there, mass shooting everywhere, and we've talked about this before, but since we have a bunch of new folks on, I wanna make sure we also impart that knowledge into them as well, Absolutely. okay? So, you know, a lot of people think it's the issue of politics, it's the issue of guns, but if I dare you to go to Deuteronomy 28, mm -hmm. Deuteronomy <laughs> 28 verses one and two tells you the condition of blessings. Verse three to 14 gives you the blessings if you follow his ways and walk in his decrees. Verse 15 tells you, however, if you do not do these things, verse 16 to 68 tells you the curses that shall be upon you and your seed. So in other words, verse 15 is the cross. That's it right. separates those of God for those of not God. So the point that I'm sharing with you is that, you know, back to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, if you understand the foundational teachings of blessings and curses, You'll see through those lens about everything that's going on in this world. And even Paul said, when he had the encounter with God, he said, look, everything I know, I count it as nothing. I count it as not. What did Paul know? Paul was a Pharisee. He was a member of the Sanhedrin. That's kind of equivalent to our legislative branch. He was one of the people who taught the law and also in purpose the law okay so he was taught by Gamiel so he had one of the most prestigious educations of his time and then when he had that encounter with Jesus he realized you know what I've been looking at things in the world through the wrong lens I've been looking at it from a natural lens now Deuteronomy shows us chapter 28 that it backs up what we just read in Corinthians chapter 2. If you're still looking at, oh, politics and poor children, I'm sorry. That's the wrong lens. Right. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, what Brother Owen just read and that we all just heard, said the natural man cannot discern these things. All right, okay. Pastor, I'm done, sir. All right, all right. Right. so far? Mm, strong. Go ahead, Brother no, no, I was just saying that was strong. That's strong. Thank yes, you for your vision. Oh, oh man, we just Thank you for sharing started. that. We just getting Thank started, you, brother. <laughs> we just getting started. Man. Uh, I, I, oh, gosh. Yes. All right. Oh. Now, let's, um, so now, we all understand the body, the soul, and the spirit. Now, yes, 
let's go over and take a look at uh let's see let me pull this up before i do this um uh, all right yeah this is where i want to get to i want to get to this here let's see here uh okay now Mm. I'm going to start with this paragraph right here. The spirit receives impressions of the outward and the material things through the soul and the body. Well, we know now what that means. The sense for faculties of the spirit are the spiritual faculties of faith, hope, reverence, prayer, and worship. In his unfallen state, now we're talking about a man that's not saved, a woman that's not saved. Now watch mm -hmm. me there, Brother Graves, Anthony, you got something blocking your view. What is that? Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, all right. That was my now, hand, I'm sorry. Attention. Okay, now, get this. Now, in his unfallen state of spirit, that means that everything is right and you saved, in his unfallen state of spirit of a man, it was illuminated from heaven. But when the human race fell in Adam, in other words, in the Garden of Eden, sin closed the window of the spirit. Okay, now, let me go back. I'm going to break that down. All right. You see this? Uh, let me go to my draw tool. Right here. See this door, right? This window right here? Yes, yes sir. When Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, it shut off the illumination of light of God that was in our spirits. Mm -hmm. So now, watch this. Let's see. Uh, where's my, uh, I need my tool. What tool am I looking for? I'm looking for, uh, there you go. All right, here. And I'm going to go with, God. there you go, black. Thing. It's supposed to move. There you go. And where's my fill in tool at? Okay, it ain't working with me. But look, y'all see where I drew that circle, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. If all this was all blacked in, you couldn't see nothing. Right. That's no, how your spirit is. It's black, it's all darkened, and it's darkened with evilness. Mm -hmm. There is no light in you. Okay. You get it? Now, if you were to open, let me clear the screen, clear all drawings. If you was to open the door right here, this door, if you open this door and let the Holy Ghost come in, then you will have light in your spirit. Yep. And you will have good things that you produce now you can act in faith hope reverence prayer and worship mm -hmm. but again going back i want you to pay attention hold up let me hit clear bear with me i, I gotta close this there you go in a unfallen state the spirit of man was illuminated from heaven but when the human race fell in Adam, sin closed the window of the spirit and it mm -hmm. pulled down the curtain and the chamber of the spirit became the death chamber. Now, this whole circle here becomes your death chamber. And if mm -hmm. you die with no light inside of you, hell is your home. Yep. Amen. That's why you never see, and this is the most dangerous part. You see right there where it says your will? Mm -hmm. That's the part that you got to beat. Yep. Your yes. whole will. Don't go to church. Don't ask no questions. Don't do this. Don't. That's your will. When you go against your own will and open the door, now you allow Christ to come into your life and feed you knowledge. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
Knowledge is power only when you use it. All right. You go to college and get a degree and have knowledge and still die and go to hell. That's right. But if you don't use it. Like that word potential. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Don't never fall in love potential. with potential. Mm -hmm. Potential. <laughs> That's it. Potential. Football players that go to the NFL that got potential, they get cut all day long. Mm -hmm. Quick. Either you got it or you don't. Woo! What you think about that, Jade? I'm doing a good job. <laughs> God doing it? Okay. All right. Yes. Good, job. good job. That's God. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Now, let's get into some good stuff. <laughs> uh, brother um, Anthony, I want you to pull up Romans 5 and 12. Romans 5 and 12. Yep, hold on. Let me catch up. I'm ready. You quick with that Bible now. That's right. <laughs> I, I had to redeem myself, man, because that ain't me. Uh-huh. Now, we're going to talk about something that's real serious now. When we die, what happens to us? What happens? Your, your body, your, your spirit leaves your body. All right, so 5 and 12, and I want you to read the 14. How does it read? Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Listen, say thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Adam. Thank you, Eve. Thank thank you, Eve. Eve. This is why we have to die today, because of them. It ain't the president. It ain't the economy, it ain't politics, it ain't your first grade teacher, it ain't your mama, it ain't your daddy, it was Adam and Eve. Man. They brought wow. this in. And Amen. that's why it says, by one man's sin, mm -hmm. entered into the what? The world. Mm -hmm. And death by sin. So death passed there go you see that our brother adams death was passed upon all men that's it all because of adam and eve now now this is what we have to say now jay for all that for for that all have sinned all of us all of us are sinners now because of that yes i know make you mad don't it now read verse 13 what does it say in 13 for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed when there is no law where there is no law there is no reason to impute sin and the ten commandments came because they sinned huh. my god <laughs> all right okay now Let's um, go over to Second Peter two and four. Second Peter two and four. I hope y'all writing these scriptures down. That was Romans fifteen. Um, yeah. Yes, that was Romans. Romans chapter five, verse fifteen. I mean twelve through 15. twelve through fourteen. 14, I'm sorry. You ready? And now, uh, uh, hold up, hold up, man. Boy, you, you, you man, you rolling tonight. Um, <laughs> Second Peter chapter two. And, two and four. And two and four, but let's see. Yep, two and four. How does that read? And many shall follow their no, no, no. Second Peter. Second Peter two and four. Okay, for if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them unto chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. All right, so we see now that God spared not the angels that had sinned. Well, what were the angels that had sinned? Remember when, when uh, Lucifer was in heaven? 
Lucifer mm -hmm. was his heavenly name. When he got cast down to the earth, he became Shaitan or Satan, which means enemy of God. All right, Jade, look, Jade, you got the deer in the headlights. Look, talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I kind of think about that a lot, you know, um, about like Satan's fall and kind of like what that actually meant to God. Uh -huh. You know, um, and it was just basically like he 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 gave Satan the, the choice: either you're gonna obey me or you're not, and he chose not to. Well, oh. well, Jay, what actually happened is he wanted to be like the Most High. He, 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 he said, was... "I want to be God," is what he did, and you can't have no more. You can't have. Uh, no more than one God on the throne. There are no three gods up there. It's one true and living God. Mm -hmm. right. Hallelujah. That's yes. right. Satan wanted to be like that. And see, Satan had it good. He was the highest chair. Yes, he was. He, over, he overlooked the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. And you know what? And because he wanted to be like God and it sat in his heart and it caused him to sin, God cast him out of the holy mountain and he hit the ground like thunder. Sure and guess where he ended up? In the Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. He was down there before Adam and Eve was. He was in the darkness. Right. So now we see why he worked hard to deceive them both because yep. he's trying to get back. Yep. All right. Questions so far? No, sir. All right. Now, let's go to Ephesians chapter four. Ephesians, actually, hold up. Yeah, Ephesians chapter four. You ready? Uh-uh, you know I gotta get it on the screen, bro. Okay, sorry Wait. about that, sir. Well, you're a dangerous man, bro, I'll tell you. <laughs> Boy, I, I, you gonna be, you're gonna be something else, man. I'm telling you. That's why they call it right. the sword. All right. <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> All right. Ephesians 4 and 7. Ida Shaki. Okay, look here. Pay attention now. 4 and 7 in Ephesians. What does it say? But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Uh huh. That means everybody has faith. Everybody got a measure. I'm going to say it's it. about what you want to do with it. Everybody has a measure of faith. Keep reading. Right. Either you can increase it or diminish it. Uh huh. That's right. That's right. That's Go ahead, right. brother. Keep reading. Read eight. Uh huh. Okay. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And gave, and gave gifts unto men. Listen, when Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, he first descended. Yes. Then he ascended. He took the keys. That's right. He took the, he took the keys from hell. He took them because if nobody had got the keys to hell and death, remember the scripture say, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? That's right. The grave can't even keep you. Man, y'all should be shouting right now because I'm going to tell you something. If you die in Christ Jesus and you die and you have the Lord in your life, not even death can hold your soul and your spirit. Amen. Amen. Now Amen. your flesh is going to go back to the dust. But you're going to get a new body. Don't worry about this one right now. Yes. Yeah. Don't worry about this one right now. Pinch yourself. Pinch it. Pinch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> it's going away. Yes. Yes. If you got one arm shorter than the other, it's going away. If you got one eye that's, that's more open than the other, a lazy eye, it's going away. It, it, you understand? All your imperfections are going away, and God going to give you a new body. Mm -hmm. you. If you can't walk, you'll be able to walk on the other side. That's right. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. All right. Go ahead, brother. None. Nine. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. 
the lower parts of the earth. Now we're talking about a place that we call paradise. Paradise was the place where you would go and wait. Now, let's talk about this thing. All right. Go to Luke. Let me 16. Make sure. Hold up, hold up. I'm going to go to 16. He descended in the same ascended far. Okay, read 10 right quick before we go to Luke. He that what? Oh, I got to go back because I was going to Luke. Hold up. All right, I'll read it. He that descended, he that descended, we're talking about Jesus Christ, is the same also that ascended. Remember he rose on the third day? Yes. He ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. All right, now we're going to go to Luke chapter 16 and 2, 20, 22, 16 and 22. Let me know when you're ready. All right, 16 and 22. All right, now, all right, now, this is what I want to say. We're going to get an understanding of where a person go by reading the parable of the rich man and the poor man. Okay, this is going to open it up right here. All right, starting at verse, actually, we got, we got, we got, we got to start at 19. Okay. We got to start at 19. Okay, in order to get the full story, you got to start at 19. Go ahead, brother. How does it read? There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen mm -hmm. and fared sumptuously every day. It don't sound like he was poor. Go ahead. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of swords. Uh huh. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from a from the rich man's table, moreover the dogs came and licked his swords. Uh huh. Keep reading. And it came to pass that the beggar died. All right. Hold up. Hold up. Stop right there. Now we're getting ready to start investigating this thing. The poor man died. Mm -hmm. And what happened? Twenty-two. And when it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham, Abraham's whoa, 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 Abraham's. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You mean when you die, you have an escort? Yep. Yeah. Are y'all seeing that? That's what the words say. There you go, brother. The angels carried him. He was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay, keep reading. The rich man also died and was buried. Uh-huh. And in hell, he lifts up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off in Lazarus, in his bosom. Wait a minute. So when you go to hell, you still have all your senses. You can mm -hmm. see, you can taste, you can feel, you even see the people that you did wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. Listen to me. But there was a barrier yes, that was between the bosom of Abraham and hell. We call mm -hmm. that the gulf. Mm -hmm. We call that the God. Okay, now Luke 16 and 26. Oh, wait a minute, Lord. We got to keep reading. I'm a go go to go to 24, brother. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. And wait, a minute. Like wait, 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 wait. You mean when you go to hell, you gonna now you're gonna ask for mercy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> There is no coming back from that. Coming back, right. All right. I'm going to say it again. Thank you, Once Jesus. Once you leave this side, yes. there is no coming back. No. Ooh, that's dangerous, Jade. It's dangerous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. This, this makes you don't want to close your eyes at night if you ain't right. 
Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, Lord, help me. Help me, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So what did he do, brother? Keep reading. After he said, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Uh -huh, keep reading. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime. Hold up. See in mm -hmm. your lifetime. Mm -hmm. In your lifetime. You receive of thy good things. Mm -hmm. And likewise, Lazarus, he received of what? Evil, Evil things. And think about Lazarus in the, in the natural. That's right. But now, but now he, he being the poor man, he is comforted. And thou art tormented. tormented. Now look here. This is what we got to be careful with. You might be living high on the hog right now, as they say. But if your soul ain't right, the tables can turn. All right. Yep. That's right. That yep. poor person that you turn your nose up yes. to, when you pulled up to the medium in the highway, and mm -hmm. somebody say, hey, do you have some food? And you say, I ain't giving that no food. Uh-uh. That's, a that's game right. They playing. You better be careful. That's right. That's right. You better be careful. That's it. <laughs> Having your party, good time with your with your ride and die. Right. Now you going and you looking <laughs> looking for See, the one a time of day to come give you some water. Right. Don't get mixed up and caught up in the game that they're playing. That's it. Because it may not be a game. That's right. See your eyes. Your eye. Remember, we talked about the chart, right? Your eyes see what it want to see. Yes, sir. And because you imagine in your mind and your senses, oh, it's all a game. It's all a game. Now, I'm going to say what my mother say. You can't see for looking. <laughs> you can't see for looking. You see everything. You know everything. But you don't see that man's soul. Uh -huh. You don't sure. think about it could be you. All right. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now, let's look at this. Let's talk about that goal. 16 and 26. Uh, this is the next verse, Brother Anthony. Read that. What does it say? And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that, mm -hmm. so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from this. But Brother Anthony, this is what we're saying. Down in hell, there's a gulf between paradise and hell. And if you could cross over that gulf to go over there to safety, you would do it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But right. so what the Bible is saying, you can't pass through it. That gulf. Uh-uh. That line drawn in the sand. That's right. You had that opportunity to do what was right when you was living. Yes, sir. Amen. Now, let's see what, what the result is. So now, what do we just read? We realize that if we die and our soul is not right, that we go to hell. That yes, ain't Dr. Wilson saying it. The word tells you. That's the word. Now, if you go... We need to talk about, do you have an opportunity to make it if you go to hell? Now, y'all know the answer to that, but I want the word to break it down. Mm -hmm. All right. So what does it say in verse number uh, 27? Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. Keep going. For I have five brethren mm. that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Wait a minute. Mm. Now, let's see if you leave this world. You got brothers and sisters, you got uncles and aunts that you leave, that you yes. left. Yes. 
So now, and I'm just using hypothetics, you down in hell mm -hmm. and, and, and all you still got your memory, you still got your sight, you just mm -hmm. being tormented. And you're like, look, I need to go back and warn my peoples not to come down here. <laughs> You know what I'm saying, Jay? And, and, and the scriptures right. say, the scriptures say it ain't going down like that. It says, for mm -hmm. I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they, un that means unless, that they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham saith unto him, mm -hmm. they have Moses and right. the prophets. Let them hear them. So guess what, Jay? What? If you passed away and you uh -huh. want to send a word back to your family, say, don't y'all come down here. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that word ain't getting back because the right. Bible say they had Moses and the prophets. Let them in. <laughs> hey, look, you got Pastor Wilson over there in Virginia Beach. Let them go listen to Pastor Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> he tried to tell me. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? You feel me? Right. Yep. All right. And verse 30 says what? And he said what? Nay. Nay. Go ahead. Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Really? Really? It took death for you to repent? Mm. How many of us, we've lost aunts, uncles, children, cousins, to all kind of things, and it still has not caused us to repent? All right. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. See, people say a lot of stuff. Oh, Lord, I'm going to straighten up. I'm going to live right. If you just get me out of prison, I promise you I'm a server. Mm -hmm. No, you ain't. You going back to hustling. <laughs> you going back to pimping. You going back to stealing. Mm -hmm. You told God that you were going to serve him if he gets you out of prison. Lying. Yeah. Ain't fool nobody but yourself. yourself. And that's men and women. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Across the board, my brother. Amen. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And we talked about earlier, you know, when um the Holy Spirit searches the heart of the person, all of the person. Amen. Okay. So the Lord knew that they would make that choice, but he still did it because that's how he is. He's like, okay, you want to do that? All right, I'm going to show you what it's like or what happens when you try to do things without me. Amen. Hello. Amen. Who was that speaking? Shamira. <laughs> show your face, girl. Show your face. Show your face. Amen. Shoot. That's right. I, I'm like, hey, girl. I, 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 I got to see who's talking. Oh my God! Show me the big old preacher there. Lord have mercy. <laughs> Lord, boy, who's your daddy, Brother Grace? Well, I see you. I see that fruit. <laughs> <laughs> Lord have mercy. Yeah. Okay. So now we see now that we realize that when you die, they went to a place called paradise. But now that don't exist anymore. Can anybody tell me why it don't exist anymore? Well, Jesus done already been there. Yeah, Jesus went the down. Keys. Mm -hmm. He took the keys. Yep. Yes, it's empty now. Jesus Christ yes. already died. So when you hear that term paradise, paradise don't exist no more now like that. Nope. Yep. Okay. So now let's go to uh, Hebrews 2 and 14. You ready? I'm waiting on you. 2 and 14 through 15. 2, 14 through 15. Okay. For Rosma, then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death that is the devil. Uh-huh. And deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subjects to bondage. Amen. For verily he took 
not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. All right. So we see here that it's empty. We see now that there is no more power that death has over us. Okay. Go to Matthew 12 and 40, and then we're going to go to Revelations. Matthew 12 and 40. You ready? Okay, there you go. Go ahead. For as Jonas was the was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall mm -hmm. the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart mm -hmm. of the earth. Woo! Mm -hmm. This is the typology of hell. Jonas was swallowed up by the well. Yes. He stayed in the belly for three days and it stunk. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. reason that he went into the belly is because he didn't want to take the word to the Ninevites. Y'all might as well throw me over the ship because I'm not taking, the, I'm not <laughs> going back to the hood to take this word to the people. I ain't doing it. No, no, sir. I ain't doing it. See, when God tells you to do something, you got a choice. Now, we're fighting against your will. See that right there? Your will. Yep. <laughs> Lord have mercy. God wants us to go against our will and obey him. That's right. Right. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And see, he didn't want to take the word, you know, so if you know the story, you have to go back and read it. He said, throw me over the ship. I, I rather, I rather, I rather drown in the ocean than to take this word to the people. And you know what? Let me tell you something. You can't run from God. Right. You can't even kill yourself if you want to. God just wants you to die. Bring you back to life. That's right. You only try. That's right. So you know what? He stayed in the belly of the well. And look, to add insult to it, the well spit him up out of his belly on the beach. Mm -hmm. so he didn't get a chance to drown. Now, this is a typology of going to hell. When you go to hell, it's going to be more than three nights, three days and three nights. This is for eternity. You don't come back from that. So the Bible is trying to give us a typology of what it's like. Okay. And if your heart is right, and you repent of your sins, God will save your soul. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Can I right. say something? Go ahead. Okay. So one thing that came to mind was, so you see how the memory goes straight to the, it goes through the body and the soul and to the spirit. Uh-huh. Um, I'm putting it on the screen because you teaching, so <laughs> I, I'm, yeah, you <laughs> ain't nobody tell you that. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> go, go ahead. Go, go ahead, sis. Go ahead. Do, do your thing. Do it. So, so, like, one thing that came to mind is, like, you know how in John 14, verse 26, I have the, what version is this? Um, it says, but the, the oh, sorry. <laughs> I got you, I'm tracking, go ahead. Uh, it says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Uh-huh, I see you. Whom the Father will send in my name. He shall yes. teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Oh. Whatsoever I have said unto you. So you know how we have his word and we read hear the word we hear it and it goes to our memory so whatever choices we make the holy spirit sends information through our spirit to through our soul and it kind of we have the choice which is the will you see where it says the will we have the choice to either take what the holy spirit says or to do whatever we want to do Right. We have that choice and the, and God gives us that choice because he gave us free will. So even though he'll remind us of his word, like if you if you want to do a certain sin, he'll remind you of a verse or something. And 
uh, it's our choice if we want to take that into consideration or not. So you're Absolutely. making the choice to either follow the Lord or to follow your flesh. Amen. And see, so what you, what, what that, you're saying, sorry. What, what, what you're saying now, now I was the student, so I I I I I want to regurgitate regurgitate back what the teacher just said. So so what I'm seeing here is you all what the teacher just said is that whatever is in our hearing goes into our memory. Yes. And we got a decision we have to make. We have to decide whether we accept it or not. Because that is driven by the Holy Spirit that's in the inside. If not, if we if we go against it, we just shut the door. We, right. We're saying, I don't want to accept what the Holy Ghost has. Now, mm. going back to the scripture, and, and she read it, she said that, uh, let me go, where is it at? But the comforter, but the comforter, which is, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father was sent in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. That's why when we look at our chart, you see the memory? It's bringing it to remembrance. Right there in our memory. But we had to hear it. So the teacher was correct. Amen. Yeah, amen to that. Amen. <laughs> to God be the glory. Because, you know, you have to have the eyes to see and the ears to hear. So yeah, that's, right. that's right. That's right. Can, can, I, can, I, can I add on to that, brother? Please, go ahead. It, it, it's so funny because I'm over here smiling as y'all talking, right? Uh -huh. And I had, a, I had a, listened to a sermon about 10 years ago. Okay. And he talked about the basic instructions before leaving Earth. Yes, sir. And and when you talk about memory, you think about the fact that we can lose that memory too. Sometimes we lose our way, right? We backslide, right? So yes. that's why it's so important to fellowship. And it was talking about how a car was stuck in six feet of snow, and it was a manual inside the, the compartment in the car that showed it how to elevate and get out. Just an illustration. And we just start thinking about that as it applies to the Bible. We know that all we have to do is go to that book because the word is, is, is what's going to get us and help us elevate Thank out of you. any kind of trouble or trauma that we actually have. Yeah. So I just wanted to share that in short because because it came that story came right back to mind as we're talking about what we're talking about. Sometimes in that memory, so whatever we take in and we feed ourselves, we got to understand sometimes we need to go ahead and have a detox and we have to just, yeah. you know, come back all right. All right. Yes, to, sir. Uh, to form. That's yeah. all. And you know what, Brother Owen, just, just to amplify what you just said, we, we just did a detox last week, but we need to detox more. We call that fasting and praying. Exactly. You understand? And, and, and as we do that, we purify, we purify ourselves so that our flesh does not overtake us and we become strong. Yes. Amen. Right. Amen. Good That's stuff. Right. Good stuff. All right. Woo. Let's see. Any questions so far? No, sir. All right. Let's go to Revelations. We got. Praise the Lord, four. sir. Go ahead, brother. Be, and just add on to what Shamira said um, when she talked about you have that choice, right? Yes. Um, and I just want to remind us Hosea 4 and 6, when we make the wrong choice not to embrace what does say of the spirit of the Lord, right? Uh -huh. And it reads, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And there's a colon there. Because uh -huh. thou has rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Uh -huh. Seeing that thou has forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So I just wanna make sure that everything that she said was spot on you make the wrong choice, there's consequences. That's right. Yes. That's true. Yes. I just got it up on yes, the screen. Yeah. People are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because because they lack have knowledge. rejected knowledge. And 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 I love yeah. that last sentence that's in purple or whatever yes. color, magenta, um, yeah. because of the fact that right back to when we talked about, you know, these kids dying in these schools. Well, there's a hedge of protection around us mm -hmm. and our seed. For those of us who believe, right? You see what I'm saying? 
And yeah. those who don't believe, there's no hedge of protection. That's right. That's right. So I just wanted to be clear. All right. Thank you, brother. Wait. Amen. All right. Let's go to uh, Revelation 18. Revelation 18? One, chapter 1 and 18. Okay. Let me know when you're ready. All right. Go ahead. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And, 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 and have the keys of hell and of death. Whoa, whoa, that's heavy right there. Yes, it is. He have the keys of hell and of death. So when you die, death cannot hold you. Right. Death cannot hold a righteous soul. Right. Because Jesus took yeah. the keys. That's right. He took the stand. He has the keys yeah. to hell and death. Wow. Well, saints, I got to cut it off. <laughs> Amen to that, though. It's that time. Oh, uh, oh, I tell you, this has been good. I love it. I cannot wait for next Bible study again to continue. But, you know, we respect the time and people's schedule. Do we have any questions before we close tonight? Any comments? Please don't hesitate. Ask your questions and we're going to give you a Bible answer. You, you know what? Then I'm not going to hesitate. Let me ask this question because just one thing is just kind of foggy to me. Okay. When we talked about in Luke, in Luke 1, in regards to, is it trying to say or is it saying in the Bible that Lazarus was able to look up to like the heavens and see Abraham and Abraham seeing, seeing Lazarus, like meaning that at the end of the day, when you die, whether you go to hell or heaven, you're going to be able to see heaven and hell based on what, whatever side you're on from the Gulf. Is Absolutely. that what it's saying? Absolutely. In the parable of the rich man. Wow. The man yes. Yes. Because see, consciously, wow. consciously, and you quoted Luke. Where'd you come from? Luke what? Mm -hmm. Luke, um, I'm sorry, I, it was Luke, when, the one that uh, Tom was reading, Luke 1, Luke 16, when he was talking sir. about the, the man in the purple, right, the man in the purple, and he went to heaven, like when mm -hmm. the dog licked, licked uh, the poor man, he went up with Abraham, the angels took him up, and then Lazarus went to, to the bottom. 16. Well, I'm sorry. So, yeah. 16. Uh, I didn't get a chance to write that down. I'm sorry, I don't know, remember the scripture. You say 16. What was it, Brother Graves? So we, it's Luke 16. And we started at the we start at the 22nd verse. Right. Um, yeah, I want to go back. I want to go immediately to the place he was talking about. Now, uh, where is it at? It's down in here. Okay, actually. And it came to pass, and the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, right. just the rich man, in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in his, you see that key word, uh, brother? His eyes. Right. He lifted up his eyes, being in Man. torments. And that, that torment's got an S on it. And seeth Abraham afar of and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said unto Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in the water, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this, in this, in this flame. Flame, right. But Abraham said, son, remember that thou in thy lifetime Receive of thy good things and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now, now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And besides all this between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us. That would come from thence. Now check this out. It says, then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, that thou would have sent me, send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, 
See, now he's relating to what's left on earth. Mm -hmm. I want you to right. go to my people's house now because I don't need my brothers to come down here and experience this flame that I'm experiencing. Right. right? He wanted to warn them, yeah. He wanted to warn them because who wouldn't go back and warn their peoples not to come down here? But see, here's the thing. Right I would say work out your own soul, salvation, right. with fear and trembling. <laughs> I love my brothers and I love my sisters, but if they don't get it right, that's on them. Yeah. Now, while I'm on the earth, I'm praying for them. While I'm on earth, I'm testifying in hopes that they get it right. But if they never get it right, brother, it ain't nothing that you can do. Says right. it ain't nothing you can do. Because they're in the hands of God now. Make sure. Make sure. Make sure. Make sure. Good question, brother. Good question. And and hopefully the word gave you an answer on that. Absolutely. Amen. This has been good. I don't want to quit, but you know what? We got to cut it off. It's almost nine. And uh, do we have any other questions and comments before we close? Is that, is that Rashid Rash on here? Rashad, Rashad, how you doing? Can you hear me, Rashad? You got me on mute. Okay. All right. But look here. Any other questions? No, sir. All right. Sounds good. All right, Brother Anthony. You need to close us out in prayer. <laughs> Take time. God, we come to you for a second time for the night, ending the night with Pastor Wilson giving a good study class. And for everybody that was on, for giving the ear to listen and take in his knowledge. Yes, sir. We ask you to bless everyone. Bless everyone's families that's on and the people that's not. Just bless through the byways and the highways and everything you're doing. And in Jesus' name, I say, Amen. 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 Y'all give him a hand clap. That that was awesome. Amen. Yes. That was awesome. Oh, awesome. <laughs> next time, I'm gonna call on somebody else. <laughs> this is good, though. I appreciate. I love y'all. I tell you, this is a blessing. Continue to come on out. Invite somebody else out so that they can come and be blessed as well and, and they can ask their questions. I appreciate y'all. Thank you for your patience tonight and continue to pray for one another. Pray for your neighbors, pray for this world that God will tarry and continue to give us one more day to get it right. Amen. 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 All right, I love y'all. We will see you, love you on, sir. Uh, next Thursday and, and uh, Sunday. Uh, we'll see you as well. So we'll we'll get that out and just make sure that you stand by and and write your questions down so that we can answer your questions. All right, love y'all. All right, sir. Love you too. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. And if hey, what? Okay. If any of y'all want a copy of this, I can send you a link to it where you can also listen to it again if you like. Okay. All right. God bless. Y'all have a good. All right. All right. Bye. <laughs>